Hey trappers, I am up here today at my buddy Herm Blett's fur shed. Uh, I think you probably are sick of seeing my fur shed every video I make, so I thought we'll come up and uh, take one in his. And we're going to a PTA District 8 meeting today, and uh, Hearn has been quite successful the last few years um, trapping Fisher uh, with log cubbies. And that's what I asked him to do a video on. And he has one set up outside. We'll go out there and he'll show you some stuff. But he'll talk about kind of his theories behind it, some of his equipment, um, and just how the log cubby came about and whatnot. Um, Hearn is actually the first person I ever met uh, from the internet, that you could say. Uh, trapping forums, back when Trapper Man started to become popular, uh, a bunch of us just talked on there all the time and chatted and I saw Hearn live not too far from me and that's where he was he was the first guy first trapper I ever met that you know didn't live right locally near me so yeah uh, we probably hung out at a convention the first time maybe in 2020 or sorry yeah, yeah it's 20. 2003 maybe port royal i think it's the first time we camped together at a convention and we've kind of been hanging out ever since at convention so i'll i'll shut my mouth here and we'll let her we'll let her talk to you about his fisher cubbies boy he likes to talk doesn't he in any event uh the fisher has moved into my area of pennsylvania this is uh the susquehanna valley um uh maybe 15, 18 miles uh, below uh, Route 80. And uh, I've read about Fisher all my life, Fisher, Martin traffic, but now I've got the experience and, and I love it. It's, it's great. Uh, my partner and I, uh, in recent years I took on a, I got a partner uh, my age that now I'm getting a little older. It's nice to have a partner. And uh, he, he's, a, he's a great guy, uh, he's nice to be around, and uh, he's, he's a fur catcher. In any event, uh, we found out Fisher moved into one of the townships on our line. And uh, I had, years before, I had been to Nelson Hausler's uh, shed, and he had a pile of these logs hollow logs and I asked Nelson what are you doing with those which I sort of knew what he was going to do he said oh they're for Bobcat and Fisher and what he did it was wired the back closed so several years later Fisher moved into my area and I thought great I'm going to use the log cubbies and uh, and they they can be found in logging operations if you know somebody timbering and know a property owner, usually the timber companies uh, put those hollow logs on a separate pile for firewood. And if you ask the property owner if you could cut up a log to make some log cubbies, uh, um, that's where we got ours. Uh, but moving on, the, the uh, log cubbies is nothing new it's sort of new here in modern day times a cubby a rock cubby a log cubby a brush cubby uh they, they've been around forever uh, it's just something we've gotten away from but it that log cubby that we use it's a hollow log it's a hollow log maybe 20 to 24 inches uh long with uh, a very large opening and it really has a wow factor out in the woods it it really has an attraction to animals it has great eye appeal and mainly uh, the northern trappers you have snow and and they really stand out they that hollow log stands out and fishers uh mainly hunt or they hunt with their eyes uh all predators hunt with their nose and eyes but fisher weasel otter they they use they use their 
their eyes. Uh, so that hollow log is is the the uh, eye catcher for a fisher. He runs logs. He leaves his scent on logs, down trees, stumps, large rocks, and this log cubby stands out in the wood and it's also a scent marking. Uh, and what we found, uh, we pre-bait our, our hollow logs. And so we have, we have the fisher working them before set day. Uh, the the uh, hollow log also acts uh, as uh, it actually it it uh, keeps your bait dry and out of sight. Which Pennsylvania has uh, uh, you got to hide your bait, so that hollow log uh, works for that. So it's not only a scent post, not only an eye catcher, but it's also a bait holder, a very large bait holder. And uh, as far as baits, uh, I use uh, mainly venison. Uh, I do put lure in there. I do use a call lure and I do use flagging. Um, and we're gonna go outside, right outside the shed here where I have a cubby set up and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, sort of show you some of these things. And as far as anchoring, I'm trapping in, uh, I'm trapping in uh, a wooded forest area, mountain. And the easiest way for anchoring a trap for me is uh, with a uh, cable extension. Now these are made, uh, with an adjustable loop and uh, you can fish them through, hook them on a sapling or a tree and then attach your trap. Uh, these cable extensions, I usually make any, like a 10 and a five footer and then if I need more, I just attach two. Um, and what I do here, uh, like I say, I found a sapling, I'm gonna, and I just fish this end through, and that'll tight, this end will tighten around a tree, and I attach my trap with, uh, with a quick link. And I just, I just attach uh, the trap with the quick link. to the end swivel and that's my anchoring system. And while I have the trap in my hand, um, I use a number two trap. I feel it's a good all around trap, Pennsylvania, uh, because I do have, I don't have much of a population of bobcat where I'm fisher trapping, but I do have a chance at, at catching a fisher or a, a bobcat. So I do use the number two. Uh, another thing I use at the cubby is flagging, which I haven't really heard people using flagging, but my partner and I, we've been very successful flagging every cubby. And uh, like I say, I think that Fisher's up on a log somewhere and he spots that flag and he has to come over and he gets a big wow factor seeing that big log cubby there. And, and then now he gets into the descent zone and he almost has to work that set. Um, the flagging I use, I've, I've really done a study for years on flagging and I just like a red or I like a black white black white contrast just that black white and what i'm using here and uh, i'll have todd add a picture later of an ag bag and that that's those big heavy plastic bags uh, that the farmers store silage in 
uh, on the ground. And uh, that's what this material is. It's very, very durable. Uh, and what I like about this, it's waterproof. I've used other uh, material uh, that didn't take water or, or snow, and this will. I'm using a number five fishing swivel. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's number five snap swivel. And just uh, some very thin wire. And I've used heavier wire, which is fine. But uh, I use that swivel for it to, to uh, spin. And we do have a breeze this morning, so I'm going to hang one outside and we'll look at that. So we went over my anchoring system, uh, my trap size, and my flagging. And uh, I'm trying to think of what maybe I'd missed that I haven't touched on. One thing is that here in Pennsylvania, we're allowed one fisher per season. And I sort of want to catch one quick, so I pre-bait. My partner and I pre-bait. And uh, that, that seems to be very effective. Uh, how often do you pre-bait uh, is a big question. I, I have no clue. We, we, we personally uh, pre-bait about every two weeks and maybe six, four to six weeks before the season. And uh, another thing about these log cubbies, uh, we leave them out. We have the property owner have permission to leave them out uh, all year long. And I prefer oak or sassafras, which they're not gonna rot down. I, I, I would sort of avoid, if you're gonna leave them out year after year like we do, uh, I would avoid pine because that rots up pretty quick. So, I think it's time we'll go outside and we'll show you a set. Well, we're out here behind the shed and uh, we have a, a hollow log uh, in place. Uh, I have a trap bedded. I put some leaves down to simulate a forest floor, which I normally trap. Uh, like I say, my trap's bedded, it's anti-freezed, uh, got some screen cover over it. Uh, one thing I do want to mention in, in woods trapping, uh, you, you'll need a hatchet, loping shears. Uh, I, use, I always carry a tile spade uh, because you want to chop the roots. Uh, usually where you put a bed, there's a rock in the mountains or there's a tree root and the the log cubby which i put out before the season uh, and pre-bait is uh, i want to get it stable i'll put wood or rocks on the side so it doesn't move roll or tip uh, I do like it, the front elevated. I'll put a, a limb or rock under it. I just don't want it down at ground level. I want it up a little higher for that wow factor, that eye catcher. Uh, there's something in there and a predator's gonna come looking for it. Uh, so when I put my log cubby out and pre-bait before the season, I always dig my trap bed in front of it for the simple reason to look for a rock or a root that's going to be in my way. Then I take care of it before the season and, and uh, not during the season. I don't want to waste any time here. So uh, this is pre-baited. They're hitting it. Uh, at times there's even fisher droppings on the log. Uh, when you come on set day uh, and man that pumps you up uh, so you want to bring something to chop or cut roots 
when you're placing these out. Uh, I've uh, what I've done, I've I've antifreeze this, and I'm using pre pre sifted. Uh, pre-sifted peat moss here. And I usually do this with the glove, but we'll just sort of touch it off. I already bedded this trap. I know it's solid and uh, we're ready to go. How far away from the opening? I have no clue. I just used my own judgment. Uh, I can't tell you what's right or wrong here, but I know I sort of want to keep it within six, eight inches from that opening. And uh, one thing I do want to use is guide. Uh, there's some pine cones laying around here. So I'm just going to sort of maybe guide this. I'm not one of them that's really too fussy. As long as that bed, that trap's in there solid. And uh, I'm gonna just spread some leaves over, sort of make it look natural. Not too many, because you're gonna jam your, your trap. Now, as far as uh, trap, I said I use a number two for Fisher, a number one and a half, a one and three quarter uh, would be a good size as well. My preference is a number two, that's all. Uh, so we got the trap in place and uh, we had that pre baited and today's set day, but my bait's gone. So. What I'll do, I'll put some more bait back in there, and uh, <clears throat> I want to get that back in. And my my cubbies have a wire uh, wire stapled to the back, so nothing can come in from the back. Uh, a lot of times, that cubby will be next to a tree I have set up, or next to a predominant stump. Uh, that stump stands out so I put a log cubby next to that and it just gives it that wow factor that eye catcher that I'm looking for now my bait goes back here uh, and I'm gonna use some bait and uh, get in there and I'm gonna back in, push it back in. I may even have to get a, a, a small limb nearby and push it back in as far as I can. Uh, so I'm baiting that up. Uh, I'm also adding some lure. My, my favorite lure here. Uh, I'll use that. I'll put the stick in there and I'll toss that back in, lure that up. And uh, also, I like to use uh, some sort of gland lure. And I mean, you can use red fox gland. Uh, I, I prefer beaver caster. Uh, I'll put some beaver caster on top of the log and, and inside the log. Uh, so we'll do that. So we got some beaver caster. We we'll smear that around. Give her a good gob in there. And toss that in. And uh, we got our big big deer bait in there. Uh, I put some other bait in there that I have and uh, some lure. And I got my trap bedded and my my guides there, I'm sort of happy with this set and 
I'm very confident, very confident this is going to work. So the, the next thing I do before I leave, I will put a call lure up here on a, uh, a sapling, a small tree, uh, some brush that's nearby, and I'll hang my flagging. Now this particular branch, if you can see it, I, I actually cut yesterday and transplanted it here uh, for this purpose. So I'm going to show you where I hang my flagging and how I apply my call lure. Okay, uh, it's go time here for this, this log cubby, this hollow log cubby. Uh, we have everything in place. Uh, uh, before I leave, I hang a flag and I apply a call lure. Uh, oh, I want to hang a flag and I like hanging them at the very tip of the limb. And sometimes if it's a, a real thin tip, uh, you get a, a little bouncing effect. Um, to me, that might be a little high. And we're gonna adjust that. And when we're, when we're uh, putting flagging up, uh, just, you know, sort of clear the runway, make sure there's not other limbs that are going to catch your flagging. You come back the next morning and it's hung up. Uh, so I, I really don't think anything's going to be a factor. Can you catch that, Todd? Okay. Uh, this limb may may be a factor here uh, on getting it hung up. So I eliminated that, got the flagging working. Uh, now how I apply, and I'm doing, I'm, I'm applying my call lure, and no gloves, uh, barehanded, and boy, it's reeks, it reeks of skunk. Uh, I'm flying barehanded and no stick. And what I do, I find a limb, and it's a limb that I'm not gonna walk into every day. This, I do not want that on my hat. Uh, I find something suitable up high. I usually double, break off a limb and double it, and I'll, I'll stick, literally stick the jar up there and I, I move the limb around. You get that idea. As you see, nothing dripped on the ground. My hands are clean. Woo! And that skunky odor has the lid on it and I can literally put that back in my pocket. So my call lure is up here, up high. Uh, we do have a, a wind heading towards you folks, from me to you. And uh, that scent's gonna carry for a long distance. We got flagging, flopping around. Uh, we got a big eye catcher, a wow factor here in a hollow log. I gotta come look at it and what's moving up here. So we got everything going for us. So that's my version of a log cubby and uh, good luck on your trap line. Okay, I, I do want to hear the head this. I want to show you the back of the cubby. And it just, simple any type of wire and we just used uh, a stapler on it an air air stapler on this cubby to close that off actually this is a piece of sassafras uh, 